Welcome to the Shadow Theatre Workshop. My name is Speaker Wabi. Uh, I'm a puppetry artist and also a teaching artist at Flushing Town Hall. After the show Hand in Hand and the storytelling workshop in the last two sessions, today we are going to create a shadow theatre to tell our own personal story together. Shadow theatre is my favorite art form because shadows are everywhere and shadows are poetic and shadows are protein and shadows are unpredictable and shadows can be powerful. Also, everyone has a shadow since the day you were born. Ah, uh, shadow is like your best friend that follow you around everywhere. Uh, you can see it when there is a light but you know it's there even in the dark. For those reasons and many more, Shadow Theatre has existed for hundreds, uh, even thousands of years all over the world. But when you hear ancient art form, you might think, hmm, it must be complicated or difficult to make. Don't worry. Uh, today, we are going to break it down and show you how to make a shadow theater uh, with the materials you can find at home and to tell your own story. See, it's not too hard to play with shadows. All you need is your body and sunshine. Then you can create so many different characters. Uh, I'm sure many of you uh, have placed hand shadows on the wall before, like this. Here comes my bunny. There it goes. Uh, so easy. Uh, and what a simple pleasure. Besides using our own body, we can also use objects and paper cut to create shadows. And that is what I'm going to show you. To start, we're going to make a shadow stage first. Uh, the material you're going to need uh, is first you need pencil, ruler, uh, a pair of scissors. So just let you know, it's better you find this kind of scissors that has a pointed uh, tips, so it's easier to cut. Uh, and also uh, later on when we make the shadow puppets, uh, it uh, can cut a lot of details. Uh, so this can be very helpful. And we also need uh, masking tape. Uh, if you don't have masking tape, you can also use scotch tape and glue stick um, and a piece of white paper. This is a later size paper and this is going to be our screen. And then uh, we need light since we're playing with shadows. Uh, without light, there won't be shadows. So. Uh, light. So uh, you can use the light on your phone since our uh, shadow stage is not too big. So this will work. And but if you have a flashlight like this, this is an LED flashlight. Just to make sure there's only single light bulb inside, so it can create just one clear shadow. Um, so that will work too. And finally, you need a box 
this we're going to transform this one into a shadow stage so try to find a box that is bigger uh, this is my uh, cereal breakfast box so find the biggest one uh, because this is gonna be uh, your screen size uh, so if you have a bigger box then you have a more playground to play with the first things we have to do is open this box uh, both uh, the top and the bottom you can just rip it all uh, open very easily now uh, let's take a look at inside of the box and you will find there's a part that they overlap and that's where you can open it uh, something like this very easy now you can totally open the box and I like to make the box inside out just because then you have a very clear surface uh, you can work with uh, you can keep it that way or you can put color on it so this is the box we would like to use but before we make it three-dimensional we have to draw a frame on it that's where we can put the shadow screen on uh, but before we do that, just to make sure the direction, uh, you need this extra part on the top so you can uh, block the light. Uh, so it's better you have this extra part on the top um, uh, to make the box. So now uh, we make sure the direction, then we have to draw a frame here. Uh, you can use the pencil but in order to make it see clearly I'm going to use the sharpie so we're going to leave half inch on the bottom and also half inch on the top uh, so let's just draw a line through the two dots I just uh, mark so let's draw a line and the same thing on the top and but the left and the right uh, we can leave a little bit more let's make one inch on both sides and we will cut the middle out so let's uh take a look so it's it's so it's good for the paper can fit in that's great so next things we are going to cut the middle out you can use a box cutter uh, and you just cut along the line but if you don't have a box cutter don't worry you can just use a pair of scissors first you poke a hole in the middle and cut it open so you have more space to manipulate so now you can cut along the line this is what we got uh, after this uh, you can also put color inside. I always like to make it darker, so put the black uh, paint inside. So uh, keep it simple, and then so the light won't reflect too much. And you can also put colors you like from the, on the outside. Again, keep it as simple as possible uh, because then uh, you won't distract the audience too much. So next things we are going to make the flat uh, cardboard become three-dimensional and this is how we are going to do it we're going to tape the top and the bottom with uh, masking tape uh, if you don't have masking tape scotch tape is fine too so let's hold it this way and then just tape it and same thing as the bottom so if you color the box already then don't forget to color the masking tape same thing on the other side we fold it and we tape it or you can color it after you put all the tape together that's fine too uh, if someone want to uh, make sure the box uh, stay together very strong then you can choose use glue gun if you have glue gun at home you can do that too so now we fix both sides then let's take a look at the this part uh, this extra part uh, we we are going to use it 
as a base. But first, let's trim the extra uh, part on two sides. After you cut them out, now we're going to fold it in half and go right into the frame. See? Now we have a base that is uh, wider than the bottom of the box. In this case, the frame, the, the frame will stay on the table more stably uh, with the extra uh, uh, space, uh, extend, extended space outside of the box. Now we can just glue it. The last things we can do is to put the white uh, screen on, paper screen on. But as you can see, friend, so we are going to trim it. So let's measure it first. See how much uh, it uh, stand out. So we are going to mark it. So this extra part, we have to um, cut it out. So let's try it first. Let's fold it to the size and then put it inside and see what happened. Oh, not too bad. So now we can cut it. After cutting, trimming, now let's put some glue on the frame. Four sides, put some glue on. And then we can put the white paper in as the screen. Voila! Now you have a shadow stage. So uh, I paint inside black and then also some color on outside. I try to keep it simple so it won't distract the audience too much. Um, so now all you need is a light. So. There you go! It's time to play! I used this photo to interview my husband about his childhood memory. During the process, I wrote down some keywords, and now we are going to use them to create a storyboard. A storyboard is almost like a comic strip. Uh, it shows you the sequence of the story. Uh, also, you can do design for the characters and sceneries as well as composition. For example, uh, in reality, this Superman figuring is smaller than the child, but in order to show how important he is to the child, I made its shadow much bigger. To show this, uh, I don't need to draw too much detail, uh, especially uh, if this is a storyboard for shadow show. Most of the time, we only need the silhouette anyway. So to make shadow puppets, the materials you are going to prepare are um, you need pencil, you need a pair of scissors, like I say, the pointed one is better, and then uh, you need paper. Uh, I like this dark uh, black cardstock just because it can create very beautiful shadow and very clear, but if you don't have it, it's okay. You can use the, the cardboard you just cut out from the box, that would do too. And then to make the joint, you need a breast fastener like this and the hole puncher. But if you don't have hole puncher, a pair of scissors will do. And if you don't have breast fastener, I try to find a twine or, or strings uh, that will do too. And then to make control, you will need a rod. So you, need, you can find a skewer or a bamboo stick or a straw. 
And finally, you need a masking tape. Again, if you don't have masking tape, a scotch tape will be fine too. All right, and then you need some photos um, for uh, reference or patterns. Uh, for example, this is my husband and I'm going to turn him into a shadow puppet. Um, so one thing very important uh, is that uh, when you create a shadow for a person and you use the photo, it's better you use their profile, photo with their profile, because then uh, it will be easier to recognize who that person is. Now we're going to glue the photo on the card stock uh, lightly, uh, just a little bit. As long as the photo doesn't move around, then that will be fine. I'm going to cut it roughly into a smaller piece, so it's easier to cut later. Uh, I want to add uh, extra on the button just because the photo I have is too short. So he needs a little bit of body on the button. So now I'm going to cut uh, the detail of the face. So it's better you cut more detail uh, as possible just because then the audience will see, uh, recognize the character better. Voila! Now you have a silhouette. Uh, as you can see, there's some extra on the side. I'm going to bend it like this so I can hold it. Some characters uh, need to do some special movements. Well, a joint can help them to do so. For example, uh, in my husband's story, uh, there's a monkey. If you are good at drawing, of course, you can draw your own monkey. But if you say, eh, I don't know where to start, well, internet is a good place to find some images. Uh, you can search monkey uh, to get some photos. However, if the photo is a real monkey, sometimes it's hard to use as well because the line is not very clear. So instead, you can search monkey's drawing. For example, this is what I found. So the drawing uh, is very clear. However, you can see the arms and the head are connected, which will make the shadow not clear. Uh, so we have to separate the arms and the head. Uh, in order to show you, I'm going to use a red sharpie. So I want to open up the arms like this. See? Uh, so they are separated. So now you can see them uh, very clearly uh, in shadow. Uh, we don't have to worry about the tail now, we can edit later. Now we're going to glue this on the card stock, and then cut it out like what we did before. Again, um, you just have to glue them on card stock lightly. As long as it doesn't move, uh, then that's fine. And again, we cut it into smaller pieces so it's easier to manipulate. Now we cut the detail. Monkeys, uh, they like to jump around. So uh, I want to make uh, its legs movable. So it needs a joint right here on its hip. So I have to separate uh, the legs and the upper body. Uh, with a joint on the hip. Uh, if I just cut it and then put it back, then it will miss a, a, a section in the middle. So in order to avoid that, 
uh, we are going to um, uh, make another set of lower body to create that joint. So I just trace the lower body like this and then that's this is where the joint will be and the upper body uh, we have to trim it since we already have another set of lower body so I'm going to cut it out to show you so this is the lower body and now we have to trim the upper body now you see when we put it back and then with the overlap uh, they can put it back together without missing anything and here is where the joint uh, be so I'm gonna use a hole puncture uh, punch a hole right here that's where the joint is and then I put it back and use a pencil to mark uh, where the hole is and then I punch another hole on the lower body. See, when I put it back and line up the holes, and I'm going to use a breast fastener. It looks like this. Go through the holes, and I open up the legs, and they will connect together like this. Now, the monkey has a joint. If you don't have a brace fastener, you can always find a, something like a piece of twine. You go through the holes and then you make a knot like this and flip over and do the same thing on the other side. And then you want to trim uh, the end of the twine on both sides. Uh, if you don't have hole puncher, you can also use the scissors uh, to make the holes as well. See, now you got the moving monkey. So now we have a joint for the monkey. The monkey can move around. Uh, now uh, you can add a tail and glue the tail on the upper body so uh, it won't interfere the movement of the legs. So now we have to think about how to manipulate this puppet. If we just use our hands and then our hand shadow will uh, mix up with the monkeys, which we want to avoid. So we need a control rod. Um, you can use a skewer or a bamboo stick uh, or a straw as long as it's long and thin. Uh, thinner is better just because uh, then its shadow won't interfere with the monkey's shadow. If you use a skewer, make sure you trim the, the pointed end uh, to make it uh, safer. Then we need a piece of masking tape. It's about uh, it's two inches long. And you place the control rod on one end of the tape uh, in a 45 degree uh, like this. And you roll the rod to the end and then you flatten it see this is what you get uh, it's a piece of extra tape at the end uh, it's almost like a, another joint and with that we can connect the rod and the puppet together so we use another piece of tape uh, to uh, tape them together again if you don't have masking tape uh, scotch tape is fine too um, so now uh, we can manipulate uh, the puppet like this uh, against the screen very easily. Uh, when you uh, finish, you can lay it down. We just made who the characters of the stories. Now we are going to make where the location which 
can be shown uh, with scenery pieces. The interview I had with my husband started with this photo, which is his childhood home. And I also found a photo of this, which you can see the whole house. So I want to use this as the scenery, but this is a little bit small, too small, I think. Um, so I want to enlarge it. And of course I can enlarge it and print it out, but this time I'm going to show you how to hand draw it. First things uh, we need to decide is the size of the house. So I want it to be bigger than the original house, uh, more or less like this. Uh, things like uh, buildings or uh, trees, uh, they are very neutral means uh, with some simple lines, uh, uh, people can uh, recognize what they are very easily. For example, the house is just a rectangle uh, like this one. And then if I add some details and if I just uh, cut it, uh, for example, this corner, I cut this corner out and same thing on the other side. It already looks like a house. Uh, if I add a roof, it's even more. Um, see, it already looks like a house. And now we can add more. For example, I'm gonna extend the roof out a little bit. So just add a little bit detail and same thing on the other side. Uh, and of course, uh, don't forget the chimney. Here you are. After the outline, and we can think about inside. Uh, we can add uh, like windows, doors. And after you do that, we're going to do the same thing like we did before. We're going to put uh, glue it on a piece of cardstock. Uh, right here, I'm going to use the leftover uh, cardstock from my cereal box. So you can lightly glue on the cardstock uh, like we did it before. And then you can cut out the um, detail inside the house first. You know, those lines um, and then the windows uh, uh, with a box cutter or extra knife. Uh, so those detail you have to, you want to cut them first before you cut the outline. Now pretend we did that already. So then you can start it to cut the outline of the house. And again, I want to add a little bit on the bottom of the house. So later on, you might need it uh, to manipulate. So see, even without the details uh, inside the house, you still can see clearly it is a house. So this is the final version, as you can see, uh, with the windows, uh, roof, and the doors. And if you have colored cellophane, you can also add uh, add them on all those cutouts to make it colorful. I also need some plants uh, in the story uh, for the little boy to play hide and seek. But instead of uh, do some paper cut trees or uh, grass, uh, this time I decided to use my mini plants. Take a look. So the good thing about using a real object is whenever you turn, you get a new shadow. See so different? So it's so easy and so fun. Uh, so now uh, look around your house and then try to find some interesting uh, objects and put it in front of the light. Uh, you might find some surprising shadows. I like to play music during my show because uh, it often creates a sense of beginning, middle, and the end with our words. Um, it can also arouse some special feeling and that will help the audience to get into the scenario. So go get some music that is related to your story or uh, create some special atmosphere.
Now uh, we have a stage, we have puppets, we have scenery pieces, uh, we have music. It's time to put on the show. Here are some reminders that can help you to put on a smooth performance. Before the show, it's important to lay out your puppets and sceneries in order according to the story so you can find the right scene at the right time. Tap down the shadow stage on the table to stabilize it. Place your light on a stand to make sure it doesn't move. Finally, have fun and enjoy it! Don't forget to check the worksheet along with this video for more shadow theater activities. Now, please enjoy a mini shadow show I made for this workshop. Thank you so much for participating in this workshop. I hope you will love Shadow Theatre as much as I do uh, and hope to see you next time.